We've had Splashdown and Dragon Resilience and the crew of inspiration for our home back on Earth. It's time for the final update. It's T plus four days, so stay tuned everybody as this is your final inspiration for our update covering the end of the mission. Yesterday, the first lowering maneuver occurred with the Dragon spacecraft parking at around 365 kilometers, which makes it easier to re enter at a more comfortable angle for the crew. Just before the final re entry phase started, viewers of the broadcast were treated to this lovely shot of Chris Sembroski enjoying some of the in flight entertainment that was available to the crew during the mission. Shortly after this, however, Mission Control instructed them to get ready as the trunk was jettisoned and Dragon was headed for the Atlantic Ocean. What followed was about a 15 minute burn of the Draco engines at the top of Dragon and then the closing of the nose cone. Whilst the capsule re-entered the atmosphere, there was a large build up of plasma, which always happens, which meant there was a communications blackout period. Just before the blackout period was set to end, the capsule became visible to thermal imaging cameras as it streaked above the Florida skies. In due course, once communication had been re-established, the drogue chutes were deployed and they were shortly followed by the mains. A small coast later and resilience splashed down for the second time in its life. The recovery team on the water went around the spacecraft to ensure that everything was okay and it was safe to lift up Dragon onto the Dragon nest aboard Go Searcher. When securely locked into place, the nest was moved forward to be underneath the helipad, bringing the hatch right next to the deck, where it was opened, allowing Medical Officer Haley Arsenault to disembark first. She was followed right after by pilot Dr. Cyan Proctor, mission specialist Chris Sembroski, and last but not least, commander Jared Isaacman. The crew were taken away for medical checks on Ghost Searcher, and once given the all clear, they boarded their helicopter and flew back to the space coast. And as you can see from this picture, the crew were very, very happy following their three day trip to space. But it is also very important to remember the true purpose of this mission, which is to inspire people and to raise money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which you can still donate to. Jared Isaacman has already contributed $100 million of the $200 million target, with Elon Musk donating $50 million himself as well. So even though you can no longer win a seat to space, you can still donate to what is a very good cause. It wasn't just Dragon returning to Earth, however, as Booster B1062 returned to Port Canaveral on board Just Read the Instructions approximately 17 hours after Resilience splashed down on Earth, marking the first time ever that the crew of a Dragon mission has returned to land faster than the booster that carried them did. And if you cast your mind back, you may remember the crew of Inspiration4 signing their names on the booster in the soot. Well, it turns out they survived the re-entry process as all the markings they made were visible to onlookers at Port Canaveral, which is super cool. Something else that is super cool, they're the citizens of tomorrow. They donate every month supporting the show and allowing the coverage of space news to continue. If you want to join the Escape Velocity Orbital, Suborbital and Ground Support Citizens then head on over to youtube.com forward slash tmro forward slash join or by clicking the join button that is next to the subscribe button below. And that's it. That's the final ever Inspiration4 update. I want to thank you all for watching and also to the new people that have found the channel over the last four days. I really hope you do enjoy your stay. That's it from me though. Jared and myself will catch you next week for more normal weekly space news updates. Thank you for watching and goodbye.